so here we go going live and we are live good evening everyone welcome to holy crap the vlogcast vlogcast it comes from a skeptical point of view to answer some of the questions of why and oh man is that question going to be asked in just a couple of moments this show started as a combination of spite the stress and effect because i needed an excuse to try beer or at least learn how to say it in German. I don't know, I'll figure it out later. Part of this is to follow through with the old adage, sometimes the journey is more important than the destination. I am your main host. I am known as Shujin Tribble all over the place. You can find me pretty much everywhere under that name. That's S-H-U-J-I-N. Hi. It's good to be back with you. Um, I Before I go ahead and introduce everybody, I just want you to know that I am in much better shape than I was last week. I have fortunately not been taking uh, pain meds. My shoulder is much better shape, and I'm hopefully not going to be pushing it tonight. I've been able to be at the computer desk for a while, which means I've been able to type, which means we have a new horrible scope tonight. Go me. Let me introduce you to everybody that's actually made it for tonight. From the Midwest of the U.S., Bridget, good evening evening and it's supposed to get freaking cold here we currently have snow 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 and we're predicted to get more snow 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 and the temperature is supposed to get down to minus 17 celsius or that's one degree in freedom units mm, yeah not tonight but a couple of days uh tonight the low is going to be minus nine celsius yeah that's that's about where we're at right now over here yeah. outside of Buffalo, so that's great. Yeah, polar vortex hasn't hit here yet, but it's coming. Mm. See, Woo! the big problem that uh, the big problem that I've got is a pair as, as opposed to you. Uh -huh. I have to worry about lake effect snow. Yeah. yeah, we don't have that, but I can tell you that being close to the river when it gets really windy, oh my god, it's brutal. <laughs> oh yes. Having grown up in New York and. Susan, you know where. Uh, yeah, I know exactly what lake effect snow is like. Uh, whether uh, lake lake effect a uh, weather is like when you have to dig your own tunnel through the snow. All right, yeah, there's, uh, there's that that. the worst, the worst part Celsius. is where I was. Oh, sorry, go ahead. I was going to tell you that minus thirty three Celsius wind chill is freaking cold. It, yeah, agreed. And we, and we get that frequently. Very much agreed. Off to the right, just a little bit from. Uh, oh. <sighs> How cold, Joey! Hi. Yep, we're we're we've run out of snow at this point. We're just uh, <laughs> we're 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 we're, we're 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 out of the snow, and we're just into basically the dry freeze now. That's that's called restocking. That's that's what that is. <laughs> it's saving up for a winter. <laughs> Just a little bit off to the right, right outside of, well, the beach. Under no tech. Hi. Hey. So on Valentine's Day, we're actually supposed to have our freeze. Negative uh, four Celsius during the day, negative 15 at night. So it's going to be a cold Valentine. But uh, I'm going to try warming up my night tonight with a little Vegemite. So this should be interesting. Oh, just wait. Uh, I got something for you in a minute. Wouldn't call Vegemite exactly warm. No, no. It's kind of salty. I'll, I'll, I'll well, get... you know, if you get high Kinda blood like pressure in there, you t tend to get higher body temperature. Uh, that's yeah. true. There's that. And I hear those zappers to restart your heart warm you up pretty good, too. Uh, I wouldn't recommend using those, though, unless your heart is like, stop. Yeah, that's 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 oh, usually. if I eat this, it might. <laughs> and yeah, these are not to play with. And all the way over the water into Paris, France. Good morning, Joseph. It is good to have you with us. Good morning, sir. I almost didn't make it. But, <laughs> but you did. So that's 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 very good. So a couple of pieces of information for everybody. Um, well, uh, of course, you know, for those of you that are watching live, please, you know, feel free to take advantage of the live chat because that's what it's there for. Uh, Stephanie, Felis, hi, good morning, good to see you, good evening, whatever the hell of time it is. Uh, today is going to basically be a 
I don't know what specifically to talk about. And there's there's a reason why, which is very different from how things have been over the last two years. Uh, I'm going to go with uh, and I'll ex- I'll explain as we go along. Uh, so tonight is really going to be very much just a we're, we're going to talk about whatever. So if you're looking for any cohesive thread through everything, this is this is not going to be the show for you for that. But if you just want to just hear some folks just talk with you because, well, we're kind of part of your social circle. Cool. Great. There. I did go looking up information on Rafe Badawi. We don't have anything new on his condition as far as to hit a release or anything. But the family has gotten the information uh, from the government for him being granted citizenship. So he's got somewhere to go. However, since he is still there, as of the recording of tonight's show, it is now eight years, seven months, 21 days since Rafe Badawi was unjustly incarcerated for thought crimes. Our hopes, our thoughts are still with you and your family. We are still waiting. Beyond that, I need an assist. And the assist is, I called, uh, I called Dallin on Discord and had a video chat with him while I was in the grocery store. I went out. I know, it only happens like once a month, give or take. And I asked for his assistance in picking out which beer I was going to pick up this uh, th- this time. Because I was out, and I actually remembered to return stuff. So you got Vegemite beer? No. However... While we were discussing which ones, and I was doing a video call, so it was it was easier for him to take a look at stuff. I had one of them that, as as we're doing the the pick six, and we're getting ready to go ahead and uh, try to f- figure out what's going to be the last one. I had somebody who was walking around behind me who was also shopping. Is just like, yeah, you should get that one. That one's good. And we both just had to laugh because it's like. All right, man. That's 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 how it works in Buffalo, man. They're gonna give you and a suggestion on beer. All right. Yeah, social interaction for the win. Yeah, you go. So at a distance, people. At a distance. So um, I will need some assistance from folks to try to figure out which one we're going to try tonight. Keep track. There's only six of them. I did get Dos Equis because I've kind of wanted to try it for a little while. Okay, so that it's one's so, kind so. of yeah. You're just now getting around ra- to trying Dos Equis? Yeah. Dude, it took me forever I mean, to try I seriously? Something. I used to serve those, like, back in 1993. No, I don't anyway. have one of those. I can't do that. Okay. So I, I also have uh, Cronenberg 1664 Blanc. It was different. Mm-hmm. It was like, okay, you know what? That's, uh, that's, that's pretty interesting. Also okay. from the... Also from the bottle collection, I have the Open Gate Brewery Guinness Baltimore Blonde. Hmm. Never now, heard of that. Yeah. Now, reminding you, I've tried Guinness. I've liked Guinness. So, there we go. Now, it gets difficult. What we have. Left Hand Brewing Company's Bittersweet Imperial Coffee Milk Stout. Okay, because, you know... Anytime some beer says coffee, I always have a bad experience. I know. That's a breakfast beverage. I would save it for breakfast. I know. I know. <laughs> and cold pizza and we've, beer. We've had... We've had... We've had... <laughs> exactly. I know we've had... We've had bad, uh, bad experiences with... Hey, Bridget, did you used to put ketchup on your cold pizza? No. Oh, okay. That's just me, then. Okay. Yeah, but I have had pizza and beer in the morning when I used to live in the barracks when I was in the military. <laughs> now, here's where it starts to get interesting. Pills Mafia Pilsner was also a suggestion. Do you like Pilsners? I don't think so, really, but it's one of those things where it was different. I don't recognize it. I don't think I've had it before, but I will keep trying stuff because sometimes there might be something that actually works on the palate. Here's, ladies and gentlemen, where we have a big time what the actual 
F bomb. Fuck. I will get away with it. From the K2 Brewing Brothers Company, Jalapeno Cream Ale. Ooh, I would try that. What? I love jalapenos. Jalapeno Cream Ale. It'd be better if you had it on a stick. How's that? <laughs> <You're just there. laughs> stick. That's the end of the show, folks. We that's that, Good that's night. we we, we, we can't go. top that. Have a great night. Uh, everybody take care. We love you. Peace. All well and good, except that you remember <laughs> there are people who are listening who have no idea what happened. And those are the people we need to invite to watch. So, <laughs> so there are the suggestions. You guys can go ahead and, and kind of kibitz amongst yourselves and try to figure out what it is that you want me to experiment so TP on. So, Seeker's already voting for the jalapeno. I'm uh, voting for the jalapeno, so that's two jalapenos. Okay, okay. Well, we will, we will, we will see. Uh, yep. We'll see what happens. And while you're all voting, I'm going to open this veggie mite. Yes, you go ahead and you do that. Let me smell I this just, thing. I just voted. Uh, did oh, you? Oh wow. I don't see. Why would you do it? Over? I can't. Go. The only way this that doesn't I can smell see bad now. at all. For voting, I didn't. Some people said it smells really bad. The I love only, this. The only way that I can do that now is to pull it up on my phone because if I go ahead and I flip over on that, it screws up the video. Hold on, Bridget said okay, mafia. Okay, I said mafia because it's a badass can. Okay. 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 Because okay. the Bills Buffalo Mafia thing. Okay, so go Bills. Yeah. Well, not anymore. Dude, I will still cheer them on even when they lose. Yeah, yeah, because they did a frick, they did a phenomenal job this season. But they they minute. did great until the very last game that they played. In which case, it was just like, did you guys just give up? It looks like you guys just gave up. Yeah. Well, come on, guys, don't do this. Yep. You're better than this. Such such it, happens. It happens. You know, something ha something happened. Unfortunately, they got close. Maybe next year. Yep. All right. I'm going to tear off a little piece of this because I don't want to get this stuck in my beard. <laughs> you do You're that. chuckling. All right. So as you can see, so, I put on a thin layer. It smells good to me. I'm going to put this uh, taste bud side down on my tongue. Yeah. Well, you get you go ahead. It is definitely very salty. Uh -oh. This is like salt lick. Yeah. Um, and Stephanie, oh, by the way, Seeker, hey. Stephanie was asking which one was recommended by the stranger. Uh, you know what? I don't really remember off the top of my head. Uh, Dallin might remember. Um, I don't remember if it was the Blanc or... You know what? Honestly, truly, I don't really remember now. Mm. You know what? It's all good. Okay, I can understand if somebody were to take a spoonful of this why they would absolutely freaking hate it but i put this on very thin put it taste buds right onto my taste buds and i i i have a sweet tooth that can rival other people's sweet tooths but even my salty tooth rivals my sweet tooth okay. and this has got a, a a savoriness to it that's like soy sauce level like if you put pure soy sauce on your tongue that kind of intensity from the the wheat and the barley. I, I like this. I wonder what it's like with cheese. Well, you have fun with that. And let me go ahead and uh, roll the other stuff. And uh, we'll see we'll see how this plays out. And like I said, you guys all get to try to figure out which which drink is going down the down the hatch for me. So, with five minutes on the clock for you, as usual. You five minute freestyle. It's gonna start right now. Breathe. Oh my God. This year has been an opportunity for us really to just breathe. And I know there's always the, the person that's going to go ahead and tell you, you know, just because you're under pressure doesn't, you know, no longer under the same amount of pressure doesn't mean that you're not under pressure. Well, y yeah, I, I, I get that. But, oh my God, how much nicer to not have to wake up every morning and go, what the hell happened while I was asleep? We don't have to do that right now. 
it's nice to be able to just wake up in the morning and just go, I can make breakfast and coffee because I want to instead of I need to make coffee so I can deal with the bullshittery that has already happened that I don't know about. There's a huge difference. We can just relax just a little bit. We can breathe a lot better. It's not that we're calm exactly, but we're definitely under less stress than we were. Lord knows we, we've we needed this. Am I thinking that everything's good at this point? Oh, of course not, no. We don't have things good. But we've got at least a start. And that's helpful. There are still a lot of things that have yet to be done. But the fact that there are things that have been done, that have needed to be done, that's good. We've got things now where we can actually just make them happen. We can say, hey, look, this has been a problem. We need to fix this. You know what? You're right. All right, let's get that done. Okay. That's, that's the idea of feeling like there are adults in the room handling matters. Helps. The opportunity to not have to worry about, forgive me, who's going to open fire in the middle of a workplace is calming. It gives us the opportunity of just, okay, what do we have to do so that we can just do what we wanted to voluntarily roll up our sleeves and get to work? Whereas before, it's not been a matter of rolling up sleeves in order to get to work. It's been a matter of rolling up sleeves because, like Popeye the Sailor Man, you got to get ready to go out there and start punching people. And it's nice to not have to be able to do that. Not have to need to do that. Like I said, are things good? No. But they're better. And that's what makes all the difference in the world right now. Are we expecting things to get, quote-unquote, back to normal? To paraphrase somebody else, no. Because normal, what we've known as normal, has been killing us. Slowly. In ways that we didn't even know was possible until a year ago. Are we going to have the opportunity to just relax? Again, no. Because there's stuff to be done. But at least we don't have to worry about the sort of Damocles hanging over our heads. Not the same way. We can actually breathe and know that we don't have to be in a complete cold sweat panic. I like this feeling, but I know this is just because we don't have a boot on our neck right now. And I can't wait. I can't wait to feel what actual peace could feel like for change. Episode 348 on the docket, Your Honor, as a grab bag. Like I said, you know, tonight we're not looking at uh, we're not looking at specific topics. We're not looking at specific headlines. We're just going to we're going to talk about whatever items have been on our heads could be good could be bad, could be, you know, this has been interesting, could be almost anything. But we're just going to kind of 
forgive me, for the most part, we're basically just kind of going to shoot the shit. It's, it's really what it's going to come down to. So, you know, it, it's it, it's not our normal format, but every once in a while we kind of have to just slow down, just cruise just a little bit. So two things. This is really good with a piece of Swiss cheese. <laughs> nutty flavor and second i finally figured out what it reminds me of i know that people say there's nothing that tastes like vegemite well not, not quite um so i've done a lot of cooking in my life and it rem if you've ever cooked a piece of meat to where you've got the fond on the bottom of the pot not to be confused with fondant which is baking uh, frosting and stuff like that the fond where it's glazed all the sugars until it's brown but you've accidentally overcooked them a little bit. That's what this kind of reminds me of. You normally you wanted to glaze that, turn it into a broth or, or glaze or whatever. Um, but I'll actually like go in with a spoon and, and get that sticky stuff off the bottom pot, put them in my mouth because I love that, that savory, strong, savory flavor. So if you like that kind of thing, you might like this, but yeah, with a nutty cheese, uh, oh, this is delicious. I, I, thought, <laughs> Every... I, thought, I thought we didn't have a steam today for the most part this really is <laughs> yeah, the, the theme today seems to be uh text of edge might well that's gonna that's gonna go away momentarily yeah so i'm, I'm, I'm almost done yeah so do we have a uh, do we have a consensus because uh, at the moment i've got well i've got two specific votes for the jalapeno and one for mafia yeah so hey, what the, Your, the his which beer he's going to be drinking? Yes. Did you miss out on yeah. what they were? And I'm, and I I'm did biased because I was the purple king. Okay, so uh, Baltimore Blonde from Guinness. Mm. Uh, let's see, uh, Dos Equis, Finally, uh, let's see the Cronenberg uh, sixteen sixty four. <laughs> the Cronenberg or the Cronenberg? Yep. Yeah. Uh, let's see. The Left Hand Brewing Company Bittersweet Imperial Coffee Milk Stout. The, uh, let's see. The Pills Mafia, which is a, a Pilsner, because, you know, Bills Mafia. Don't ask. And the one that seems to be the odds on favor at the moment, which was a complete what? Uh, K2 Brewing Jalapeno Cream Ale. No, 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 no. Um, I vote Hall Penal. I vote Hills Mafia. Mm -hmm. And I think it was a TP Seeker had my back on the Hall Penal one. Yep. See, the the one that immediately came to my mind was the Cronenberg, but no. Um, Felix it, is saying do the Mexican one. The Dos yeah. Equis. Dos yeah. Equis. I mean... I just can't believe we've never the, mo had the most a interesting man in the world was a red shirt and and survived. Yeah, this is true. Him and Scotty. Yep. So, but does like it it does taste like beer? I'm just going to warn you. Is it is it surviving if you're stuck in a Dyson sphere for on, on. several? Well, kind of in, because he was in an incorporeal state. Yeah, but he was on the... the never mind. We're, we're, we're... <sighs> yeah, I'm kind of curious about the jalapeno one also, because, I mean... <laughs> I don't know, because I, I, don't, I don't know about the, I, don't, I don't know about cream ale, so... See, I don't... real cur curiosity is how I'm going to react to this. It's I don't your remember. your taste buds, dude. Uh, who do you? I don't remember exactly what it was, but there was a warning on NPR when I was working on my car today of a particular uh, beer that had to have a recall. The mango one? Yes, the mango cheesecake something. Mm -hmm. I don't remember exactly, but apparently the risk was that it would start to re-ferment. And, um... Bang. Our, our shields can't withstand firepower of that magnitude. Yeah, Stormy Dragon posted the link 
in uh, one of the other Discord channels. I've got it right here. I'll, I'll post it so we can add it to show notes later. Yeah, there's that. Um, you know what? I mean, you had my attention uh, with cheesecake, so. I am not going to do the jalapeno, and I'll tell you why. Because, you don't want to warm up? Because you don't hate yourself? Because Dallin's not here to witness it. <laughs> uh, uh -huh. So, so, to that end, I'm going I'm to keep that one on the back burner for the time being, figuratively speaking. Figuratively speaking. Uh, yeah, you know what? I will, I will do, I will do the Dosakis just because I'm sick and fucking tired of Bridget giving me all kinds of shit. Oh my god, how you nipped? I'm not a beer guy, remember? I know, but I mean that was just so common for my brief stint waiting tables at a Mexican restaurant to uh, help hey, me Bridget. Drink full. Bridget, how about the kids fresh out of college, uh, fresh into college who want that? You know, they want to try a real uh, alcoholic beverage and order a freaking Zima. Bridget, <laughs> Bridget, like my head. But as long as they tipped well, I really didn't laugh at them. I, too I'm hard. going to have to back up Shujin here because I have never had a Dokusekis. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, but Shujin's a hell of a lot older than you are. True, Vegas. but I've been drinking a lot more than Shujin has. Yeah, but you're also smarter. <laughs> That's debatable. Um, consi considering that I uh, I am the one that decided to drive through a blizzard in 2010 and ended up with his car uh, upside down 300 feet down the side of a mountain. Let me ask you this. Do you enjoy a good Bud Light? I'm sorry. The, the, the question is, is malformed. There is no I'm, such yes. thing as a good, a good Bud, Bud Light. Light. Right, right, right. That's what I was getting at. I was like, if he had Not answered all... yes... Not only have I never had a good Bud Light, I've never had a Bud Light. It's a wise There's decision. A... I had a Bud Light once. I took a sip of it and poured it out. I I've... feel bad for the grass. <laughs> Actually, with a handful of beers that I have tried, I was able to basically surmise as to what kind of beer I particularly care for. Um, I have tried. Paps Blue Ribbon. Never again. <laughs> you and me both, brother. I have tried Coors. Never again. Oh, so you like dirty water. <laughs> I have tried Corona. Shut up. Cat piss. Never again. I spell beer G-U-I-N-N-E-S-S. And I leave it at that. Because I like my bread bottle. The way it's going to be spelled for the next 5,000 years. What's really funny Precisely. is... Precisely. I agree with you. I like a, a Guinness. I love Guinness. Now... But it, I like mine cold, and people yell at me. They're like, you should be drinking it warm. It's like... If I wanted it warm, I'd drink it warm. I don't failing, want it warm. Failing the availability of a Guinness, I will settle. It's not even so much settling. I actually do enjoy it. I will take a Yingling Black and Tan. Okay. You ever have a Blue Moon? I have not. I have had a Killian's Irish Red. Those and while it, wasn't, while it wasn't my favorite, it wasn't bad either. There's a pub in Virginia called Kate's Irish Pub. <clears throat> And they have a microbrewery make their own red ale, Grandma Kate's Irish Red. However. It's better than the Killian's. The best beer I have ever had, and possibly ever will have, still goes to the wonderful folks over in Pittsburgh at the uh, Church Brew Works, the Pious Monk Dunkel. <laughs> because when you can't feel your lips after the first sip. What? Yeah. What's in it? Beer. A lot. No. A lot. Like, what's the alcohol content? A, A lot. lot. <laughs> I'm sorry. Did you did you miss the part where we both said together, "A lot." A lot. 
Okay, sometime we're going to have to make a pilgrimage out there, and somebody's going to have to introduce me to this thing. Both Dallin and I, waiting for the rest of our party to arrive, because uh, we had decided we were going to eat there, because it is not just a brew works, it is also a grill and uh, fine dining, and a tad on the expensive side, not something you'd do every single night, but Fair enough. When, when, you, when you can get an eight-ounce steak with uh, fresh buttered broccoli and uh beer to boot with all with all the bread you can eat that's a good night um while technically making it sacrilege as well that's the fun part i mean when when you can look over to the confessional cat uh, uh confessional and see that they've turned it into a wine cabinet you know you're in the right place <laughs> i had a blue moon once <laughs> with or without the orange uh, mine was without the orange, but it was with some really amazing Memphis barbecue, and that was courtesy of Bill at Barroom Atheist. Very cool. Oh, there you are. Yeah. Yeah, I tried it both with the orange and without the orange. It was like, I like citrus, but I could take it or leave it with the orange. I really could, it, one way or the other. And it's not a bad, it's not, it's not a great beer, but it's not, a, it's not like Budweiser, which is really great if you need to... You know, stack it inside of a wall to reinforce a wall. Budweiser's good for that. Bud, why would you do this to yourself? <laughs> no, no, what I meant was it's using it as filler <laughs> to a wall, not to a human being. There you go. <laughs> yeah. So let's go ahead, get into the uh, the, uh, uh, the, the last stuff before we actually get into, you know, doing what we're doing already, which is, you know, just blowing off fun. So as always... It's time for your horrible scopes. Those of you that know what your astrological signs are, cool. Those of you that don't, make it up as you go along. Roll a d12. We don't care. Actually, come to think of it, I wonder if there are d12s out there that have got the astrological signs on them. We you spelled look... a word wrong. I'm sorry? In Aries, in the first sentence, the word in quotes, one O, not two. No, you've got it wrong. And I'll he show you. Spe he spelled the word exactly how he intended to spell it. Carry on. So, let me go ahead and get you guys going over here. Aries, your best friend just called you a looser behind your back. It's in relation to your diet, so it's okay. This time, Bridget. Taurus, the only person that should ever tell you that you have something in your teeth should be Wade Wilson. If you don't know who that is, you need to go watch some old screw attack death battles. He's one of the two who broke death battle. Me? Joe. Joe. Okay. Gemini. We know you're just being cautious, but it's time to shake it off and just do it. You'll finally have that meme of Shia LaBeouf out of your head. And remember, he's totally not cannibal. Cancer Moonchild, yes, you have made a great decision this week, but please try to keep it in your pants. For the looms only go on the outside of your blue trousers when they're red. And no capes! Joseph! Job. Did he step away and not tell anyone? No, I would tell you if I stepped away. Well, I don't know about that sometimes. <laughs> Leo, you remember the Ronco slogan, see it and forget it, for the Showtime Rotisserie? That slogan is no longer trademark protected as of 2018. So you know what you need to do? Start an elevator installation company and use those initials as your company name. It'll sound Italian. Siafi Lifts Incorporated. Yeah, I actually did oh. research on that, man. Set it and forget it. No longer trademark. Can I just point out that we did not plan for the Frenchman to have to say rotisserie, but now we're glad we did. Yes, you, you're 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 quite, you're quite right. You're quite right. It's a croissant. Why, yeah, but that's what 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 was that about? <laughs> no, no, a boot. Oh, I said it in yeah, uh, rotisserie. Okay, how would you say that in English? <laughs> Almost the same way. Yeah, believe it or not, just without the accent, rotisserie is how we say it. We, we we would say it far less classy. <laughs> <That's true. laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, well, it's true. It's one of those words I can never say the same way again, like uh, um, salon. Here salon? The, yeah, salon. Go in, oh, yes. Would you like to take tea in the salon? No, I'd like Only to take Only if I'm getting my, my hair done. Yeah, but that's, yeah, salon. Okay, anyways. Uh, carry on. Go on then, Virgo. Keep calm and take a bubble bath with a friend. If that friend happens to be of the stuffed variety, just remember they will outweigh you when the water gets cold. Have a plan on how to get out safely. Libra. All those failed job opportunities we say... <laughs> I'm going to start all over again because I just blew that. Take two. Oh. Take two. Do we have time? Yes, we do. All these failed <laughs> job opportunities say we need to just go big. How about you just start shopping yourself out as a human resources director? <laughs> Claim you used to acquire humans for Shea LeBeau and hold your best poker face when they ask you about it. It's big brain time right there. Scorpio. We know you hate winter weather, but look on the bright side. No mosquitoes or hornets buzzing around your head while you're outside. It's true. You, you took that from me because that's my excuse for snow. Sagittarius. Things will be confusing this week. Take a few extra seconds to reorient yourself before setting off on new tasks. It'll pay off in the long run. Not that you've been running much. You couldn't even catch a cold right now. At least you can catch your refrigerator. I know it's a dad joke. Leave me alone. Joseph. Joseph. Oui, oui, monsieur. <laughs> I, I there you are. Again. Yeah, okay. Uh, where are we? Capricorn. The one oh. that says, it will not let you swear. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and it's my own sign. Uh, Capricorn, this week someone will call you a son of a bitch. Don't forget to ask them which. Romulus or Remus? <laughs> if they make a Star Trek reference, call them a nerd and hang up. If they don't know what you're talking about, tell them to read a book and then hang up on them. If they understand Roman mythology, start answering everything in Latin and then hang up on them. I like that one. Sound effects. Necessary. Aquarius. You think the world is all about you. Here's the deal. It is. Just don't let Leo know. They they think it's all about them. Yeah, you see, you see all your Leo friends looking at you like that? Yeah, you, you know we're right about that. Sees. A phone call is going to go poorly for you this week. Don't mention pointy ears or you'll get hung up on. Find your vacation pictures from Rome. That might help. And those are your horrible scopes for this week. If you enjoyed them, wonderful. If you want copies of them, I'll have them posted sometime next week when I start on the next set. But uh, if you didn't like them, you didn't bribe us enough. You can try that again next time over on Patreon. You can you can possibly do that. Just just give us some money over on Patreon so I can forward it over to Dallin, please. Maybe, kind of. That'd be nice. Just saying. Anyway. So. Also. Yes. I, I, I feel it needs to be said. Mm -hmm. For those of you up here in the uh, northeastern corner of the uh, continent. Uh, it is going to get very cold tonight. Please remember. Your little dog might be shivering more than it already does. Please don't stick it in the microwave. That's not going to give him, well, technically it will give him that warm, fuzzy feeling inside for all of about 30 seconds. Yeah, the rest of his life. Don't, don't, don't do it. Don't, don't do it. Okay, so Dos okay. uh, I believe it or not, I'm going to say it this way. This is like the beer equivalent of, well, cola for me. I mean, it's not bad. It's, it's not great. It's not bad, 
but it's, it's not fantastic, but it's up to expectations. Yeah, and like I said, I mean, I'm 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 feeling like it's almost like it's cola for how it feels on my face right now. So you know, I got no problem. And uh, specifically, this was the uh, Dusky's uh, Amber, so that we are understanding which one it is. So it's the double X version. So there you go. It's not green. Something wrong, Jim? Look in the chat. Not not the group chat. Uh, well, the group Discord. chat, not the public chat. Yeah. Yeah. That's, mm. um, there you go. That's, um. Been there, done that. Not fun. No, no. We'll, uh, maybe we'll explain later. Maybe mm. not. Probably not. Just trust us when we say there's 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 stuff that uh, we will find out about after the show because I have questions. So, God damn it! it. Seriously, it is it is like swallowing cola with this for me. Mm. Really weird. I don't know if it's just that I'm thirsty or, or what the deal is. Oh, you know what really grind you know what really grinds my gears? A lack of oil. Well that too. But also uh when you're trying to enjoy a bowl of soup and your spoon just happens to be short enough that it slides and falls into the bowl. Could be worse. Your spoon could be made of gallium. Then there would be no spoon. Oh yeah, that there is no, no spoon. You'd also be poisoned. Well, probably. Is no, toxic? probably about it. it well, can, if you consume it, yes, it is poisonous. Yes. <laughs> that's why. That's why they show in those demonstrations where they put a little bit of gallium on top of like a can of soda, and they show how it eats away, and that the pressure, pressure, and everything makes it, the soda burst out, and everything. They tell you if you do this, even if you take remove the gallium. Uh, gallium do not drink out of it because there will be remnants of the gallium no matter how good you clean off the top of that lid uh, of course everything's going to fall apart anyway Cur it's going to be in there courtesy of the folks over at lentech.com slash periodic slash elements gallium is an element found in the body but it occurs in a very small amount for example in a person with a mass of 70 kilograms there are about 0 0.7 milligrams of gallium in the body. Mm, Pure kilograms? gallium is... What's that? 70 kilograms, you said? No, point zero, or 0 0.7 milligrams. <laughs> 70 uh, uh, kilograms. Oh, yes, seven, <laughs> 70 kilogram of the... of an average person, yes. Yeah, I don't think that I'm 70 kilograms. I'm You're just also saying. not average. You're outstanding. Have I just been insulted? See, the th it depends like, on how you read into it. The thing is, is see, you can touch gallium. It's not like mm -hmm. um, it's not oh. like mercury and some of those other ones where if you touch it, you get it on your skin. Some of those organic compounds and such, you're you're gonna die. Okay, it's not like that. A yeah. lot of people have handled it. They've spilled it on themselves, things like that. I was, but like I was, but the consumption of it, um, and some of the different compound forms of it, when ingested, are now see there. It, it's rough. even worse. Yeah, pure gallium is not harm. Is not a harmful substance for humans to touch. It is. It has been handled many times, only for the simple pleasure of watching it melt by the. Uh, heat emitted by the human hand. However, it is known to leave a stain on hands. Even gallium, even the gallium radioactive compound, gallium 67 GA citrate, can be injected into the body and used for mm -hmm. gallium scanning without harmful effects. Yep. Although it's not harmful in small amounts, gallium should not be purposefully consumed in large doses. Gallium easily <clears throat> compounds and amalgamates. Some gallium compounds can be very dangerous. However, for example, acute exposure to gallium-3 chloride 
can cause throat irritation, difficulty breathing, chest pain, and its fumes can cause a very serious condition such as pulmonary edema and partial paralysis. Okay. Who would have thought that a who would have thought that a metal that r melts at room temperature could possibly be easily compounded? Yeah, well, a little a little over room temperature, just, just a little. But look at iodine. Iodine is beautiful in that you can use it to uh, silver in photography. You can use it to purify water. You can use it to sterilize wounds. You can use but... it to really piss off somebody who's got a cat scratch. <laughs> <laughs> my, uh, my my grandparents on my father's side, when I would help them with the gardening and things like that, and I'd get a rose uh, thorn scratch or puncture, out came the iodine. And now the thing was, is despite how much it hurt, it worked very, very well. Uh, doctors use iodine solutions. Uh, betadine solution, if I remember correctly, is part iodine. Um, could be wrong on that one. I'll have to look that one up. But I have oh, as a backup. I have I have as a backup in my closet an actual bottle of iodine that's been properly um, uh, it's a proper ratio for use to sterilize wounds on human hands without uh, going beyond being too strong or too weak. And, um, you know, it, it's an actual uh, commercial made uh, one. It's not like I did it in my own, you know, test kitchen or some shit like that. Um, but iodine, you know, in the wrong amounts or dissolve with other things, really bad day. <laughs> Just remember, while we're on the subject of chemistry and our previous subject in consideration, alcohol is a solution. Not saying it's the solution. <laughs> it's true. I remember anybody, hearing that in my chemistry class. Anybody remember Mercurochrome? Wait, uh, with the letter M in the front, right? M yeah. is in yes. Yes. Stuff that was like red that we had when we were kids, or at least you did and I did. I don't yeah. think they sell it the, anymore. Uh, that I, song. Yeah. Oh. I never had it in the house, but reminding you that my first job was working at a pharmacy. Yes, uh -huh. mercurichrome was still something that was, um, to a certain degree, a known commodity, although it was kind of, you know, not really used that much. But folks, if you really, really and truly want to piss off somebody that has gotten themselves some abrasions... While what? helping them, while helping them at the same time, I have two words for you. Back teen. <laughs> Here it oh my god! I was the world's worst. You're evil. I was the got... world's worst about you know getting skinned elbows and things like that from oh, yeah. uh, riding my bike. Oh yeah. And then that stuff would get whipped out by my grandma and painted yeah. all over. And oh, it hurt. Yeah, back teen. Yes. No, no, no. Me no, 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 no. But but the the reason why I go with back not the pain relieving spray. Right. Back teen doesn't hurt. Well, I'm sorry. Well, not like the mercurochrome didn't. It didn't leave you red for days. Well, don't forget the mercurochrome actually was banned because it had mercury in it. Let me, I know. Or, 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 let me tell you why I pick Bactine over Mercurochrome for its um, sanitary, yeah. sanitary and sadistic uses is yeah. because Bactine you can actually use as a ranged weapon because it came in a squeeze bottle that would <laughs> on top of somebody's. Yeah. So you could I get remember. it in their eyes and you shouldn't have been getting this. You can, mm, Ranged weapons. Now, if you could get the back team with the lidocaine in it, that's actually pretty good. Because oh, it it's, it's, it's a pain reliever. Mm -hmm. See. Do they still sell solar cane in the can? I solar cane. I have a can of it. I don't know so. if it's how old it is. Let's see. Does Walgreens? Walgreens. Well, he's I know, but I used to. I mean, you know, I lived down south, and oh you yeah, know, being being outdoors all the time down there i mean solar cane was like a staple in the house yeah, yeah. it's still sold yeah but uh, walgreens has it but you'd need to have somebody else use it on you because invariably you'd have to have it used on your back 
See, yeah. you don't want uh, me providing... You know, when I was like 10 years old, I was a lot more flexible, too. By the way, no, you don't. Not anymore. While they do have the uh, the solar cane spray, it uh -huh. also comes in a gel now. So oh. if you were to take one of like those back scratchers, you know, the one of the curved hook ones, and put um, one of the uh, like the Swiffer mop heads or something on there, something flat, yeah, you know, a piece of. Uh, so for example, um, not the not the actual thing, but the plastic part. You know, you could put, well, think of a roller, one of those little tiny paint rollers. I don't really want to think about putting a the little ones, like this onto a jury rigging, a Forget. sniffer end onto Fine. a freaking back Screw scratcher it. so that you can. Fine. <laughs> back it up a notch. Get the little tiny roller paintbrush thingy. That's about yay big. The little wheel. <laughs> put a couple gel strips around it. Soak it in there. Tape it to the end. Boom, up and down, up and down, equal application. You're good See, to go. One of the If you many... live alone and you have nobody to help you, you have to MacGyver a solution sometimes. I'm, I'm, uh, Joe, Joe, Joe needs to go, but I'm going to tell you this. What is going through in my head right now? Nobody needs to know what's going through my head right now. Joe, go, please. <laughs> I was just going to say, see, you really, really don't want me providing first aid for you because while I will keep you alive, um, I'm not going to disclose just how much sodium chloride I'm going to stick in the bandages. Salt? Really? Um, You're going to put salt in there. You're going to put salt in the wounds. Remember, he keep said that his, his job is to keep you alive. Yeah. Remember, it's all in the details. Yeah. Remind me to get you a bathtub full of lemon juice next time you bring Meanwhile, I've got fucking Herman Munster in my head. Sometimes death is better. I don't remember the actor's name. Okay, I'm sorry. No, no, no I, I got you. Fred Gwynn is, is who you're thinking ah, of. Yeah. Fred Gwynn, uh, Pet Cemetery. Sometimes death is better. Oh, just one I've not seen. I'm sorry. I've I've got the I've got the play um, the Adams family <laughs> in in my head from early on because Teddy Tribble was was Uncle Fester, and I did not find out until after I started to watch the play while he was performing and, and practicing. Uncle Fester is basically the god of that play because he is effectively the narrator. And you know for well, the narr whatever the narrator says goes. Mm -hmm. I remember the opening of it where Gomez is introducing everybody and, you know, gathering the family together. Alive! Dead! And he pauses, he looks over at, uh, over at Lurch and undecided. It's like... <laughs> me, I'd play that one just... A, I'd play that one just a little bit different. Dead! Alive, look over. I would look over at Lurch and just kind of, you know, do the whole hands going back and forth, kind of, you know, the the the, uh, the scales, looking over at him, confused. Which ones are going to be? And undecided. It's 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 that's just me. I'm sorry. I I, I saw. I saw some bootleg of of the Adams family play, and it was Beb Newworth as Morticia, which um, and um, Nathan Lane as Gomez. No, I'm sorry. If 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 you want me to be on board with Gomez being a a an absolute baller with his wife. No, not Nathan Lane. Mm -mm. No, no, and and Babe Newworth. No, <laughs> no. no. I'm sorry. I know the old TV show was not exactly the way that um, Mr. Adams drew the original comics, but um, I I'm sorry. It's hard for me not to see Gomez and Morticia from black and white TV. 
I'm so glad they never colored that. I'm so glad that they never changed it out of black and white. It loses something afterwards because they did a thing later where it was in color. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, colorization does ruin some things, in my opinion. Yeah. That, some of the older Shirley Temple movies, things like that. I like when they redid the uh, Wizard of Oz. <clears throat> and they started it out in black and white. That's that's the way it was. Rolled... Yeah, it was originally thought like that. Yeah, they, they, what they did is they paid homage to the other one by starting out the same way black and white and then transitioning into color uh, uh wait what what other wizard of oz um i think it went by a different name um probably would have. there was the 1939 film right. where uh right and then there was um i think they just did they just call it oz um that's Damn, name. what was it called? Well, while you're looking that one up, the, the one that I remembered that I was horrified that they did the really crappy colorization on. The, uh, Oz they, the Great and Powerful. Oh, uh, the, um, mm, that was relatively recent, wasn't it? Yeah, it was 2013. Yeah. But the thing was, is they started it out. I, I went to see it with the 3D goggle, uh, 3D glasses and everything. And it all started out in grayscale and then it, just like in the 1939 film, they went from grayscale to color, very vibrant colors, except more vibrant now than we could produce back then. And I had the 3D glasses on. So I basically, to me, uh, the, f the feeling that that instilled in me, that, that transition, everything that it went through, when I was uh, talking with my folks about it, you know, like, that's what we felt like back then when that film came out and we were watching it in black and white and then it went into color except you had 3d and i was just like i actually got to share an experience with my fam my folks despite a generational gap despite a technology gap so i thought that was pretty cool yeah, there's that. Just... um oh yeah the one that i was uh, i was saying that I'm horrified at uh for colorization was um the laurel and hardy babes in toyland March of the Wooden Soldiers. Oh, uh, yeah. It, they was... did a horrible job on that. But then again, considering when they did it, you know, looking back on the technology from then, yeah, I... Mm, just You're talking about the Walt Disney one from 1961? No. No. March of the Wooden Soldiers, Laurel and Hardy, otherwise known as Babes in Tollland. So that would have been, what, 30 or 39? 34. Babes in Toyland. 34. Okay. Yeah. Okay. No, I saw the, I didn't see that one. I saw the 1961 one. Oh, wait. No, 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 no. I'm sorry. I'm looking at a screenshot. I did see that one. Wait, that was in black and white. They did colorize it? Yeah. Oh, I saw. Yeah. I don't remember that being in color. Maybe I didn't see that. You're you're lucky. So now every year, uh, WPIX Channel Eleven, New York City, uh, has been playing that for you know uh, Thanksgiving or Christmas or I forget which one it is they do it specifically. It's become like a tradition, and I remember specifically on Facebook they went ahead and asked everybody, "Well, what would you prefer to see? Would you like to see one over the other, or should we play them both?" And a lot of people were basically like, play them both individually. Don't 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 stick us with just the color one. Do the black and white one for those of us that lived with it. Do the colorized version for the kids that don't want to see it in black and white for whatever reason. Yeah, the one in sepia. Oddly enough, I have actually seen both versions of the film because my mother and my sisters were obsessed with it during the holidays. I thought it was funny when he had the little darts and he had the stick and he would hit the dart on, on the tip of it and it would flip it up in the air and he'd go whack and it would go flying into like some guy's butt. I forget Wasn't what that, that was called. That it was, uh, it was one of the two, it was the skinny guy. Uh, Laurel was the skinny one, right? Yeah. Or, 
but I don't, yeah. I don't, I don't remember what the uh, what that kind of thing was called. Right. But there were little toy darts. Yeah. And 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 they, they it was funny watching them hit the dart to spin it up in the air and then whack it and hit one of the attacking guys. And I'm like, I could do this at home. And of course, I got trouble. <laughs> Yeah, every every holiday season, it was Babes in Toyland and Alistair Sims' Christmas Carol. I want to live, Clarence. God, I hate that movie. Uh, that one not so not so often. Every year. Why don't you go put on the nice outfit that your aunt? <laughs> You'll shoot your eye out. You know, it's become a tradition uh, in my house, thanks to having uh, reproduced <laughs> um, the, uh, uh, the Polar Express with Tom Hanks mm -hmm. doing a lot of the characters and such. And um, as jaded as I have become about uh, some of the holidays in this country and how people... Oh, you know, it's the season to be caring and giving. It's like, hey, asshole, that's every day. Oh, you know, I'm I'm much nicer to people in the stores than I normally am. That means you're an asshole to begin with, and you're just choosing not to be for a little while. I'm not going to give you a pat on the back for that. If you, you're actively making the effort to stop being one for a long period of time, I'm going to cheer you on from the side and from the front. But, um, you know, uh, I, th I actually really like the Polar Express. Yeah, we, we talked about that uh, over here recently, Tiny Triple and I, and we're both pretty much of the uh, of the agreement. We would really like to see it redone, the, the CGI redone with oh, current yeah. level. Stuff. Yeah, with with new with the current level of technology, yeah, they could smooth that out so much that it would be epic. Yeah, that'd be pretty interesting. I I finally I finally pulled it up. The uh, the stick with the um, hitting hitting the stuff on the ground and um, ha having the darts fly up into the uh, into the air and uh, whack them with a stick. That was apparently mm -hmm. called peewees, and I have, I have no idea anything about those. I don't. It was still funny to watch. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And it turned out that uh, the the main villain Barnaby, mm. uh, that actor, reprising a very similar role, ended up in one of the. Uh, Little Rascals episodes. Hmm. So that was that's cool. That was that was actually pretty cool to find out. See now, I go try to figure out. I, I, I go looking up information for peewees because it's just all one word: p e e w e e s. Yeah, what's the first thing that comes Playhouse? up? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Used to watch that on Saturdays until he exposed himself in the theater. Which was really funny that people made a big deal out of it because apparently he wasn't the only one doing it because he was in a, um, what's the word for, uh, what's, one of those pornography theaters. Yeah, where other people were doing the same thing. The only difference was he stood up. I was like, so you guys made a big deal out of it? Oh, because he's a celebrity, you recognize him. Then you made a big deal out of it. Yeah. Like, oh, okay, whatever. Well, when you're doing, you know, shows that are geared towards kids, it's just not a good look. It's true. That's true. It's a piece about that that really sucks, you know. Folks that are in the uh, that are in the public sphere, you know, you, th there's a certain there's a certain level of anonymity you just cannot get back. Uh, there. There's one thing, uh, there's one actor that I have become very, very impressed by, and I, I think it's probably the best way of putting it. And it's not, it's not one of the voice actors from 
My Little Pony. It's not any of the actors from the uh, typical, you know, Star Trek cast. Sort of. Believe it or not, it's Will Wheaton, who on Next Generation Star Trek was uh, you know, Wesley Crusher, who got so much shit from the fandom because he was playing a very unlikable character when all was said and done. Not his fault. Right. Yeah, toward the later episodes, yeah. But Will Wheaton, over all this time, has actually turned out to be, and I, I, I have no problem with saying this, a good person. Oh, yeah. Just don't wonderful. let him touch your dice. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, well, he's, he's definitely a, a big gamer nerd and, and all that stuff. Well, right? no, no, no. There's there's a thing that go that's go that's gone around the many role playing game table stuff like that. If Will Wheaton touches your dice, <laughs> forget ever rolling high on that dice ever again. Oh, don't be hating on Will. And, and he, I don't know if you've ever read any he of his He embraces writing. the meme. He does. He I, does. Oh, I'm sure he does. He also loves, you know, the picture of the boy clown sweater, too, that somebody made for him. I mean, there was, there was one, uh, there was one show where they were playing with a dice that he had gifted somebody. And... It turned out so badly that after the show, they actually recorded an after-show special of them destroying <laughs> that dice. Oh god! I don't, I don't know now, if you've read any of his his writings or not. I've got three of his books that he's written, but he's a wonderful writer and oh, yeah. a genuinely good person and very villain. You know, villain. No, he's also a little bit hypocritical. You know, he created the concept of Wheaton's Law. Don't be a dick. Yeah. And it's it's one thing to have a disagreement with other people, but there are lots and lots of cases where the uh, the fans have come out and it's like, yeah, I got to meet him, and I hope I never see him ever again. And, Next okay, person so, to say so I have met fans of Robert England, and I have met the ones who drool over him and there's a difference your fan a good fan is respectful of their personal space they're respectful of their time they understand that sometimes they have very little to give and there's only so much that they can do or say in, in that allotment and then there's the ones that are overflowing with i'm your biggest fan you're gonna love me you're gonna appreciate everything i do and you're gonna fit this mental image i have of you okay those people are not realistic I have dealt with those kinds of people, not as a uh, any kind of person of, of stature, because I'm not. I have been in line with those people to meet the people who I'm a fan of, like Robert England and many others. Um, to you folks listening, if you're in the United States and, there, and we're past the pandemic because we've got the shots and everything else, and there's the Monster Con, go. If you love horror movies, you won't regret it. Um, I digress. I've seen both types and I've watched the, I've watched the stars put up with them and Robert England, he's a class act when dealing with the fans versus the droolers, as I call them. He is very classy in dealing with them. Uh, he also probably has a lot more experience than Will Wheaton and some of the rest of them. He's got a lot of time, you know, but um, there are the, those that, aren't the droolers who are still getting a lot of negativity and not a lot of conflict when meeting Will Wheaton. And you see them in reviews, things, certain magazines, uh, some of the people who have worked for magazines have met him and it's like, uh, yeah, I don't want to interview that guy ever again. He can be very vitriolic. Um, he takes some things too far. And basically, he breaks his own rule. He didn't really have a childhood. No. I give him credit there. And star actors, when you look at any childhood actor who didn't get their childhood, they have this kind of a problem. And after that experience, to be fair, he uh, he reaped all the blowback from it 
hmm. when he was just trying to get back into the swing of things. I mean, let's face it. He, he did have to go ahead on his own Twitter feed and next person to say, uh, shut up, Will, is getting banned. Yep. Or shut up, Wesley. Sorry. Yep. Yep. And, Thank you. You know, Mr. to be Stewart. fair, even though he was a child star, I think even without having been a child star, he probably would have grown up to be a fucked up individual just because his parents were so abusive to him. Yeah, right. So... I give him some credit in that from time to time you can see where he's making the attempt to not break his own rule. But I don't, um, as oh. much as I like this character in Star Trek, and I like how it was written, even when he became a jerk later on because he was following footsteps of what other people expected him in the storyline versus what he wanted to do, I have appreciation of that, that kind of character development. Um, I will not put him on the same pedestal as I might put, say, Robert England. Like I said, he's a class act. Yeah, that's... I think it's fair to say that um, if, the, if there's one thing that we should remember, uh, that folks should remember in general about us, and uh, forgive me for speaking on behalf of all of us for, for the most part on this one, we don't put people on a pedestal. We admire <laughs> things. We admire people for accomplishments but we don't put people up on a plinth i used the wrong terminology i apologize no 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 no. you're you're yeah. what you what you were getting across of course right you know everybody's nobody is a perfect saint nobody yeah. is an incorruptible uh is, is an ir, irre, irredeemable sinner yeah i got that right i mean it people people do you know it's it's yeah. and, and there's 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 nothing inherently wrong with that in ourselves the wrong would be if we don't learn from it and try to do better later all it takes is just one bad day that's true huh. by the way by the way by the way i do want to point something else out about will wheaton on the other side of that coin like Bridget said, and like some of you guys said, he has done good things. Notably, he and his associates and friends and uh, just people that he, he works with in the, uh, in the industry as, worked as a team and brought back the love or made people more aware of the love of tabletop gaming. True. Well, I have to give him credit for being quite vocal in public with his, you know, struggles with, you know, suicidal ideation and depression yeah. and, you know, substance abuse problems and, and things like that. And being a, a very strong advocate for mental health in this country. Yep. Yeah, he's... he's and been, those are hard to admit. Yeah, he's, he's tried. And to go public with it, yeah. He's tried. And, you know... I don't use the term lightly. Uh, Phyllis will will be able to uh, acknowledge this one very easily. You know, love for somebody that is trying so hard with something that is so incredibly deeply personally um, uh, an emotional scab that there, there are some that just don't go away but mm -hmm. you know you you find ways to not pick it all completely away it's a whole other thing and on on the it's brighter hard. side yeah on the last brighter side to this there are um there's three words that i'm going to suggest that people go look up in relation to will wheaton those three words are spicy dick milk <laughs> now out of context it is really difficult for people to go Let's say that what? with a straight face yeah however i will i will have to try to find the video for for folks so that they can take a look at oh, uh, will wheaton's it. spicy dick milk because if you think 
if, if, if you don't already know, trust me when I say you can't guess what this story was because it was, um, forgive me for wording it this way. It was a delicious story. It really was. <laughs> Oh, uh, and that, that's as far as I can get. I, that's as far as I can take that one right now, because um, yeah. However, something I wanted to point out earlier mm-hmm. that is in the same vein of what we were discussing is um, Warhol said it. Everybody in the future will have fifteen minutes. And yeah. here's the thing. It's not to say that everybody deserves that 15 minutes of fame, but here's the thing. It's more a matter of, can you survive that 15 minutes of fame without detonating as a person? That's... That's a really interesting question. Because there are a lot of variables in there. Fame is very different from what it was 20, 30, 50, 60 years ago. Um, you know what? Let's let's arbitrarily let's arbitrarily go with nineteen ninety five. Because that nineteen ninety five is arguably the tipping point for when the internet became the 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 mass transmission point just be, because before that point that was that was the uh that was the AOL switchover if i remember right mm. that that flooded the inner tubes with everybody so yeah prior to 1995 wow what a difference in in everything like i explained to my son you know you will never know the privilege or you may never know the privilege it depends on what happens in the future of being able to be forgotten by the world because anything that you do now that makes it onto the internet can never be forgotten unless the internet goes away because someone somewhere has saved something whether it's a screenshot an audio clip a video clip whatever it will always be brought back out somebody will drudge it up run your name through the muck uh it will happen over and over and over again if it's catchy enough and if it's all it has to do is it's one person has to remember it's like oh yeah i saw this weird video you know now that we're talking about videos of people face planning while trying to car surf here's this one kid who was you know in california or florida or mexico and he was car surfing and there you are all over again granted my son's never car surfed so <laughs> that's that's why i used it as a reference but the point is is that um anything that i've said on the show that's incorrect where i've gone and apologized was like hey i was wrong you know, I I misunderstood. I was tired. I misquoted, or whatever. I just plain misremembered. Um, and I went back and said, I, "I'm sorry. I was wrong." It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter because there was a point where I was wrong, and somebody will drag it out and go, "Oh, you're using you're, you're saying such and such argument." Well, what about this one time you were wrong? Like the one time I was wrong means that every single one of my arguments will forever be wrong. Now, that's a fallacy, but it doesn't matter. People still do it. That would be like me saying that if Will Wheaton went on TV and he said something and he was right, but it was like, dude, you were still a dick back in the time. I don't want to hear anything you have to say. Well, why am I holding something like that against him uh, when he's a- actively been working to better himself? Okay? Like I said, I don't hold him in high esteem. I recognize some of the stuff that he's done. I recognize some of the mistakes that he's done. But I just don't hold him in a high esteem. Doesn't mean I hate him as a person. Yeah. But some people will forever hate him as a person for that one thing or this other thing over here or this one thing over there or this perceived problem. 
Just like people will hate me because I have a beard or because I got something wrong or I misquoted something or I misremembered or I got confused. Oh, okay. um, my so, age for you has nothing to do with your beard. It's the tone of my voice, isn't it? Admit it. No. <laughs> <laughs> but the point is, is that my son and, and uh, Sujin, yours. Tiny will never know the privilege of being able to be forgotten that we grew up with. Every mistake that we made as a kid, if somebody didn't get that on a Polaroid and digitize it and put it on the internet, if somebody didn't record it on a cassette tape, convert it to a WAV file and put it on the internet, it, <laughs> that's funny. Um, sorry, that's an inside joke. Can't repeat it. Um, but if, if somebody didn't take this old analog material, and digitize it and put it on the net then we actually have the privilege of not having those mistakes flaunted in front of us for the rest of potentially for the rest of our lives or the rest of the existence of the internet you know thinking about it in that context some of the things i did as a kid if they had been so widely available on the internet I would have either A, ended up in a institution, or B, ended up with a fucking job. <laughs> I will say this about the internet and its archival properties. Thanks to the internet, I have been able to tell my son, and with video evidence, of why something is a bad idea. Granted, I have to use, as an adult... I have to go, is this too shocking a video to get my point across? Is this too extreme for his age group, for his mentality, where he's at as a person in his development? Is this a good example to use? I mean, so I have to use discretion. The other side of that, though, is that, yeah, the Internet can help to illustrate bad ideas. It also helps to per perpetuate them because let's face it, nobody ever thought that, uh, you know, doing interviews while choking down 10 progressively spicier wings was a great idea, but somehow it caught on. Wow. And they so actually the made a game out of it. Too. Yeah, they, they made it into a challenge. Sorry. Yeah. Hold on. What was that, Bridget? I said, but so did the Tide Pod challenge too. Oh, God. Hey, you know what? I'm in full support of that because I've been arguing for a long time that gene pool needed to be cleaned up a bit, so. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, if you ever want to know why the Tide Pod Challenge is a really bad idea, watch uh, uh, Chubby Emu on uh, YouTube. With uh, Yes, that's Emu, like E-M-U. One word, Chubby Emu. He talks about a, a, a patient, a kid, doing the Tide Pod Challenge and having to go to the emergency room and what happened to him. Uh, if you have any kids who have ever looked at it and thought, oh, that's funny, show them that video. It's it's actually a good video. Uh, they don't show anything gruesome, but it does go into a detailed explanation of why this is a really bad idea. Yeah, but that would have never become a widespread thing without the internet and, the, and YouTube. Yeah. This, is, point. Th this is true. By the way, over in the live chat, Tracy, just saw it popped in there. Hi there. Cool. Welcome Hi, there. we have another one. Um, There is... There is um. There is another piece, though. Uh, as you guys know full well, and I, I've talked about this before, I've got uh, I've got a home server that I I've built out, uh, known as Hexadecimal. Some of you know, and I've been ripping DVDs, you know, because, well, I mean, what the hell is the point of having a home server if you don't do that? But uh, there's Flex. a piece. Yeah, there's a a piece that. Uh, there's a piece about this whole thing with the internet makes things never go away again. Yes. But there's another piece uh, also that uh, one of the things that I'd ripped recently, uh, I want to kind of put together with, with these things about how we don't forget things and things kind of explode into the social consciousness because of reasons and it's specifically this. The movie that I've got here is the most recent 
live-action CGI space battleship Yamato. And, and this... Some people have uh, have seen the old 70s cartoon series. Some have seen the, the various reissues of it all. I, I watched it as a kid when it first came over, and it was incredibly sanitized for the Western market. I did not know that at the time. Star Blazers. Yeah. Yeah. But it wasn't until I started looking up information about uh, about the ship itself, about Yamato, about well anything about it. Uh, all I knew it was as uh, you know, it was a World War II battleship that was uh, that that they turned into a cartoon. Okay. You know, it it didn't occur to me at the time, you know, why why was this such a big deal? And were it not for, I, I will go ahead and I'll say it. Were it not for right off the bat, first and foremost, Wikipedia, I would not have known what Yamato was, what her, her his, shit, I forgot which one it was. I think in, I, if memory serves in Japanese culture, a ship is he, I think, if I remember correctly. In any case, I did not realize the cultural significance to Yamato in and of itself. And places like Wikipedia, where it is a collaborative effort of any and everyone to put together the combined accumulated knowledge of humanity... That is one of the most incredible, incredible altruistic things that has ever come out of the Internet, as far as I'm concerned, to date. Those of you that lived up through the, the 70s, you remember when you'd go and uh, you'd be, a, a, you'd be a, a, a failed contestant on a game show and you'd get a, a set of uh, Encyclopedia Britannica Cool, great. Uh, you got nowhere to store it, but okay, you know, you got it. But for any and everyone to be able to say, here is the newest information that's available. Minutes, within minutes of someone who is famous dying, their information has already been updated to reflect the most the most up-to-date information. They died this time. They were in this location. This is how old they were. Here are the details that have come out as to why they died. And it's absolutely... It is, for me, arguably as important, if not more so, than the Gutenberg Press for distributing information. Here's an interesting fact about Wikipedia. You can, uh, they, they have a system set up so that you can actually download it. You can actually download a full copy of the entire Wikipedia to your computer. Uh... There's also people who have made custom operating systems where um, you can install it on like a, a Raspberry Pi and set it up so that it becomes a Wikipedia server hosting whatever you've downloaded. And you can tell it, program it to actually go out and pull updates from the Wikipedia servers for any articles that have come up so, and literally host your own home uh, brew Wikipedia server. Um, one guy used those features to actually create a project. He had the idea of what would happen if the internet went offline? What happened if the, the crap in the world hit and we wanted to store the sum of human knowledge somewhere? He said, well, Wikipedia is a good place to start because there's lots of stuff in there. And we could skip the articles about movies and we could focus on things like chemistry and math and other sciences and such. And so they could. So he showed um, one of the opera, one of the Linux based operating systems. He took one of these little uh waterproof boxes he built a computer into it gave it hard toggle switches uh, battery backup uh 
universal plugs that the military use for uh, certain things. I mean, he did an amazing job with it. I was like, dude, you know, it's like, hey, uh, you want to auction that bad boy off? I might be interested in that. <laughs> Shoot. Uh, Go sorry ahead. to backtrack for a moment. Uh, after browsing through really quickly, I, I tried to find an example, but apparently there aren't a whole lot ex of examples of the masculine being used for ships worldwide. Mm -hmm. Um, I haven't found anyone that specifies uh, ships beyond the actual name of the ship itself being masculine. Uh, I haven't been able to find any culture that refers to their ships using mas masculine pronouns and whatnot. However, there is one notable exception to this. Okay. The Bismarck. The captain of the Bismarck specifically referred to it as a he. Okay. Because of its firepower. Okay. Uh, in the movie... The captain of the Sidelets referred to it simply as it. With good reason. <laughs> uh, in, in, in the movie, by the way, uh, the, the uh, Space Battleship Yamato movie that I've got, the engineer specifically calls the ship uh, uh, Good Boy. <laughs> so that, that's why I'm going with that. I did pull up the information from Wikipedia that says roughly how much storage space there is for Wikipedia. Um, the size of the article text in the English Wikipedia measured, compressed, uh, da, 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 da. I'm trying to find the most recent, uh, Okay, according to what I've got over here, it looks like as of April of 2018 is the latest, the, the latest time that we've got a, a listing over here. Um, it looks like it's compressed. It was 12.85 gigabytes. Well, when it's mostly text yeah, 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 with yeah. just a few picture attachments, I mean, it's not like they're storing large videos. Okay. Um I've, I always find it amusing when people are like, why do you save every single email? Uh, well, first off, I work in IT. There's a little something called SIA, cover your arse. But on top of it, a regular email with no attachment takes a very tiny space because it's just a text file. Even if it has another text file attached to it, it's still a text file. Spreadsheets, they might get bigger. I would never want to email a database file and some graphics, uh, you know, like PNG format can be pretty small. PDF, PDF literally means portable document format. It is designed to be smaller. I've seen Word documents be reduced in size by many megabytes just by converting it to PDF. Likewise, I've also seen people inflate a document by converting it to PDF, but I digress. The point is, is that Wikipedia you know, they're set up for large data storage, large data dumps. They've set it up so that other people can help mirror their servers. Um, you can selectively take what you want from it and use that. Um, it, it's it's all in all, it's a very smart idea. Um, what kind of blows my mind, it's, I don't know if it's common knowledge or not, but once in a while, uh, Wikipedia, uh, I think once every five years it assesses the articles. And, um, well, there's a print edition. Yes, I'm just looking at that right now, as a matter of fact. Go ahead. Printable printable version, yeah. Yeah, they don't take all the articles. They take, I think, everything above a uh, good article. or um, First, they, they have one note, which means um, it, it designates something as, you know, print-worthy. And then they also take into account the, the article quality, whether it cites the sources and whatever. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, that must be fucking huge. Oh, funny you should say that, because like I said, I've got that literally on the screen in front of me right now. In 2015, someone post uh, published the English Wikipedia uh, through Lulu, uh, online ebook and uh, print self-publishing platform distributor and retailer. It was volumes of 700 pages each there were almost 7500 books 
7,500 volumes at 700 pages each. See, here's the thing that gets me. When I look at Wikipedia, okay, I had an encyclopedia growing up. I also, and I still have them. They're still on my shelf. I, uh, because I was interested in space at the time, and I didn't used to ask for a lot of things as a kid. So as a present, my parents got me from Time Life Books, the complete space collection. I think I book, had that book too. On, book on star formation, book on meteors, meteorites, and meteoroids, books on black holes, what we thought we knew about them at the time. And when I, one of the things I did was I... Uh, sidetrack here as i actually took my son uh, to the side one time and i took out one of the books and i said this is what we thought we knew when i was your age now look at what we know at your age this is what's going to happen when you become my age this this difference in knowledge is potentially going to be exponential um there's there's no two ways about that Absolutely. Uh, if, but when I look at this stuff, I had to look things up on in paper. You had to look things up on paper. Well, a lot of us did. And when I hear, when I have a 20-something or a 30-something walk into my building and they bitch and moan about how they don't know how they're going to look something up. And I'm like, we have the sum of human knowledge in the palm of our hand that we can index, that is indexed. We can search it at any time that we want. Almost anywhere in the world, there is no reason to be bitching and moaning about something like that. None. There are poor countries that even have infrastructure for this. Yeah, if if the if the if the pieces that you're talking about are similar to the ones that I had as a kid, yeah, there were there were cartoony artist renditions of what we thought. Um, uranus or pluto looked like yeah because we didn't have actual photographs yeah we didn't have sh we didn't have shit no and they based it off of what uh they thought it would look like uh as described by other scientists in some cases that they speculated because of how certain elements reflect light waves and give off certain colors that they speculated that it would have this kind of color pattern and so that's what they based those cartoony pictures off of Yeah, and then I remember the stories of um, Dr. Sagan, who correctly surmised the overall composition and temperatures of Jupiter before a probe was sent there to try to figure it all out, because he did it by uh, extrapolations based on sunlight reflections and radio waves and, and smart man. The thing is, is that I've noticed the more we rely on these, not the phone itself, but computers, and just relying on them for just straight answers to every single question, we get, as a species, it seems to be, at first glance, at least from my perspective, and I could be wrong, um, that we've become a much more impatient people especially in more well-off to do countries we've become more impatient in some cases um you know why don't we have the answer right now why don't we have it right now why don't we have it right now granted a big business drives some of that mentality of course they're not you know but they're not the only ones to blame it's yeah. entirely possible um It just boggles the mind we have all this information and yeah we get saturated with false information too but like it mix that with um there's a certain part of the population uh you were talking about earlier um about uh, well there's certain people that think that if you're wrong once you're always wrong and that kind of turns you uh, what what they're trying to do is designate you or reject you as um an authority figure basically mm -hmm. and uh well you know there, there seems to be <clears throat> some desire for an expression of absolute certitude from a source 
So if you mix that with the impatience, uh, well, the result is... Trump. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm just, I was, that was a joke. Yeah. Well. No, you're, you're absolutely right. Uh, I agree. Well, I'm not sure you're absolutely right, but I definitely agree with you with that statement. Well, all these conspiracy theories, for example. I mean, it just takes two neurons to... Oh, come on. It takes more than two. Like, five? Oh, okay. I'll count next time. <laughs> I've got something that uh, just showed up on my Twitter feed, and uh -oh. I need to check this really quickly. Uh, so I'm... I'm going from my uh, from my phone over to uh, the computer directly because if this is true i need are to share are we missing this. armageddon again i'm sorry are we missing armageddon again there's always another armageddon or, or an arctillian battle laser that's going to destroy the planet i'm i'm not too worried about it today i set my alarm and everything Let me just do a real quick look at this to see if this is real. Because if this is real, this is real. Okay, so here's the deal. Does anybody remember uh, a couple of years ago? Wait, when, what, what year was it that she did this? I don't have a specific year as to when this was, but within the last couple of years, there is a, uh, a photograph taken of Donald Trump's motorcade going past someone, uh, a woman on a bicycle, who threw up the finger at him. And this, this photograph by staff photographers made it out into the open. And it was, you know, it was, it was a big to do. And it raised a whole bunch of controversy. And his royal drunkenness was so butthurt over it, he yelled and screamed and wanted her fired from her job as a private citizen. Well, she was. And to use an expression, now it's time for the rest of the story. The news that just came through for me on Twitter. In 2019, Briskman, that's, that's, that's her name, Julie Briskman, a Democrat was elected to the district seat of the Loudoun County Board of Supervisors where she lives, defeating an eight-year incumbent Republic. Uh, wait. Was it Ripple? Was she Republican? The person that was in there already for, for eight years. So, the woman who was fired for throwing the finger up in private protest, who was subsequently fired because of it, got herself into politics, took out the person that was in charge, and has started her rise now. And it just feels so good. Good. Why did this come across my Twitter feed now? Because the piece that came across says this. Julie Briskman was the cyclist who gave the Trump motorcade the finger. Donald Trump was so angry he demanded that she be fired, and she was. She was so angry she decided to run for office and defeated the local Republican candidate. The reason why this one specifically came across was the following line in it. She has been sworn in now. Go, lady. Well done. What's the expression? The best revenge is living well. Good job. That's 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 pretty badass to me. I gotta I gotta I gotta make sure that that's um. Yeah, I'm about to down you. TP Singer was just pointing out that in Georgia. The other day, um, a bunch of people, uh, state health workers specifically, state health workers employees, 
rated the busiest medical clinic in the county and basically confiscated, I say stole, all their vaccine supplies because the clinic had the audacity to vaccinate school teachers. So they stole close to 500 shots, which, you know, it's the Pfizer vaccine, so it has to be handled carefully, which means it's probably already spoiled. And the doctor, uh, one of the doctors that was there, said that, uh, you know, they received no warning and they can no longer provide vaccines for the next six months. Can can we cut Georgia off like Texas and let them go out to sea with Florida? I mean, you know, there's a point where the cancer, you, you cut the limb off. You know, maybe we'll follow up on some of that stuff a little later. You thought you could take a breath and then this shit happens. You know what? Frickin' Trumpists. Trumplicans. I was having a good night otherwise. I blame TP. No, I'm just kidding. TP is no. not to blame for making us aware of something like that. No. And and funny enough, he's got it right. One word. Georgia. And Yeah, there's a state I never plan on visiting now. Yeah. Yeah. You know what? Let's not let's not drag down on that one in particular for right now because there's one <laughs> I do have Fel <laughs> Felis responded to my uh, statement she goes it would take a big saw attack it's like challenge accepted alright <laughs> let's get Mythbusters on this you know if, if I could build a saw big enough <laughs> there's, a, there's a Bugs Bunny clip somewhere yes you know <laughs> was thinking exactly the same thing we, we should posit that to mythbusters smithbusters <laughs> dear mythbusters can you build a saw in the cartoons like so big that we could saw florida off <laughs> let's do an I, experiment i i do have one question though sorry about this but the 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 anti-vax uh movement is mm -hmm. i've always found this intriguing but i mean uh, who is motivating these people to go out I mean, where's this? Where where's their source? Because well, they all have one. Yeah. One doctor who lost all his creds. Well, no, that's I'm years not ago. Quite no, skilled, I'm, though. I'm, I'm talking about the recent, um, exclusively the recent COVID. Uh, well, the anti-COVID uh, demonstration. Yeah, but part of it is Wakefield. He is still out there. He is still doing talks and selling peddling shit all over the place and. Unfortunately, it's, you know, it, like any other cancer, he's still got enough push out there from people who bought into the bullshit that it's it's just having a hard time getting rid of it. But it's it's absolutely incomprehensible to me why it's still going when we're talking about, first off, inoculating an adult population first and foremost. You know, the people who are, uh, the, the people who are older, who are at risk, who are front line, who are helping the elderly, who are in a position where they, they need to be healthy to serve those who are not. And yeah, wh why the fuck would they be upset with all of these people? I, d I just, I don't get it either. I'm, I'm right there with you. Well, I think some of it is politically motivated, too. Imagine that. Um, I mean, that's the huge divide, at least in the United States, as far as, you know, the anti-maskers versus the well, pro-maskers. But and Trump has been deplatformed. So like, he has, what? but his but Trumpism mm -hmm. lives on. Let, 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 him, fin let him finish, okay. because I think there's a piece there. Keep going. Me? Or yeah. 
Oh no, no I just I, I just want to know um, because almost without fail, um, whether it be uh, the Trumpists or you know the extreme evangelists, they have their sources, and I mean Trump has been completely deplatformed. I don't know if he got his account. Does he have his personal account back on Twitter? No, or? no. No, the only the only thing that he has right now is uh, his own website, and he keeps asking people to tweet stuff for him. But that's 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 where he is at the moment. But his Trump wins. Yeah. Uh, and there was another website that, um, you know, that they had that that they were using got the plug pulled on them too by the person who actually bought the domain. Yeah. They so like even Part A is gone. Which is kind of weird from an IT perspective because they got shut down. They they could have just moved their shit to another host. Oh, they did. Anyways, they did. Oh, they did. They uh, did. They're they're up again. They, they will well... be soon. About a week or so is what they're saying. Oh, that's a damn long time. Well, so they got they got mean... another hosting thing that hosts a lot of the like the neo Nazi websites and things like that. Jesus. Yeah. Okay. Um. <clears throat> yeah. No, well, I'm just, I'm just. Uh, that's that's my open question, um, because I mean, there, there, there has to be a source now. Well, it's it's his acolytes now, and from what I have read, he's having other people tweet things on his behalf, or trying to at least, or trying to, um, you know. But the ideology is out there, and there are still people that are going on Newsmax and OAN that are still, you know, propagating this bullshit. So, I mean, there really is no getting rid of it. And what really brought that home is, you know, one of my friends that lives in Indianapolis, you know, even yesterday, people on there were saying, well, I can't trust anything that Fox News said. And they got rid of Lou Dobbs. And so, you know, my only sources now are Newsmax and OAN. And I'm like, okay, you need to step away from the crack pipe because crack kills. So Fox, and it was uh, lots of people. I mean, hundreds of people on this one thread that were just, "Well, I'm going to go watch Newsmax and blah blah blah." And I'm like, "Oh, these people are too far gone." And here, here's something that helps reinforce this whole mentality of uh, of, of this idiocy. There was a website called the Donald Dot Win, and after January sixth, uh, it when Reddit shut everything down and Twitter shut everything down and all that for the Trumpists, the Trumplicans, um, they flocked to the Donald dot win website, which is mm-hmm. basically a, a giant bulletin board. Um, well, they've shut it down because the, the, the main host of the site is like, I was getting a lot of FBI inquiries and this, that, and the other thing. And, you know, I, don't want to do all that and it was all because of a small amount of people coming in and brigading the site it was like well first off that small amount of people stormed the freaking capital that was not a small amount of people you just ask the police officers you know and the people who died in that event um the uh he's gonna uh the the person the uh, is going to reopen the site as america.win well Underneath America.win, it says, if you are not America first, you are last. I was like, that's fascism, you asshole. You're, mm-hmm. you, in your line, you have just declared to be fascist. Yep. Well, Look, it's people first. It's people first. You want to do some focus on some problems in your country? Sure, but remember, we're all human. I don't think that uh, people who are um, open to fascist ideas, I don't think they even have a concept. They don't. It's not under consideration. They don't consider they, you know, me and my own. That's it. That's all. Yeah. <clears throat> they judge everything around them by their own... Um, it's really funny. It's an ironic situation because the their behavior and their 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 decisions are based on their own level of comfort and those around them. But 
at the same time, we see like uh, a lot of the uh, the Trump voters fucking trailer trash, like living in misery. Yeah. They're not yeah. even able to to judge their own um, level of living. I don't know how to say that, but like, I mean, um, no, that's 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 a good way of putting it. Well, it, you know, they're not it, self-aware. There was a com there was a comedian named Steve Hofstetter. If you've never seen his work, he's actually pretty funny. Um, he will admit that he's progressive, a bit of a liberal, and all that. But he did a, a, a quick, brief little seven-minute video about um, that crazy lady in office. I forget her name, uh, but she came out of Georgia. Uh, and Marjorie huh? Trader Green. Yeah, that lady. Okay. And how that she won in a county that she initially didn't even live in. She lived in a very rich, wealthy, well-to-do county. And um, when the person in the county that she won in who was running... Uh, I think it was they died and there was basically no uh, co no competition she packed up shop and moved to that county and then ran unopposed and that's how she got in when they did an analysis of the county it's 85% white and of the people there less than 15% of the population has been to college or graduated high school. It was one of the two. So this is a county where scholastics is not very high on the list. Yeah. Yep. And we've it's... seen time and time again when you have an area of population where the people, whether regardless of the reason why there's not a high education rate there, uh, it can be any number of reasons, but when it doesn't have a high education, they don't make wise decisions. This is why I've always said, even if I never had children, even though I do have one now, I've also said this before I had one, I would willingly pay more money for better public schools in this country for somebody else's kids. Because when it comes time for them to vote, if they have a better education, they can make better decisions. And who knows? Maybe their decisions will be better than my own. One could hope. Yeah, one could well, hope. I have have an uncle that has totally drunk the Kool-Aid, you know, so to speak. Actually sent me a link on Facebook, you know, private message, uh, proving that that President Biden believes that COVID is a hoax and it actually is really a hoax. And I snapped on, on him, you know, I mean, he's 83 years old. He's going to be dead soon, probably. But I was like, COVID hoax, really? You are saying this to the wrong person that I tore into him. You know, and I'm like, yeah, I'll try explaining that to my patients that it's a hoax. And the people that, I've had, you know, die over the past year. And, and I said, tell, yeah, try telling them that it's a hoax. And I was like, oh, wait, you can't. They're dead. <laughs> but I was like, I am not the one to be having this discussion with. Trust me. Yeah. Well, the thing is that the <clears throat> people like this, he's survived by imitators. They, you know, they're basically, they were brought up being told well if i obey the authority figures and i follow these rules and i do x education and i get good grades i'm gonna have a nice job i'm gonna be paid i'm gonna have a house uh, for my family and everything and all that worked until probably hmm, the 1960s so like they grew up in you know just like um uh, giving up self-governance for you know they let somebody else make all the decisions for them and well they were rewarded for it but the thing is you know that's why they're so stuck in their ways because it's basically it's work for them so far oh, why do i have to think about anything i rely on the authority figures if i work hard they'll 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 reward me but i mean that's just not the case anymore but the behavior pattern it's it seems to be it subsists so i think that's a big explanation for a lot of what we're seeing now 
And like basically the the guys who are giving the rules, <laughs> the funny, the, the same people who are making the rules are the same people who are exploiting these populations. But instead of um, you know taking any responsibility for what they're doing, they're blaming the other people. Like the, it, it's almost like keys. Like uh, for me, this. Um, uh, anti-vax and all these conspiracy these conspiracy theories and like you know blame Hillary and all that it's all the same thing I mean it's just basically comes down to jingling keys uh, so that these people blame their own plight on not the person responsible for it but um, you know anywhere else it's a tough thing to have to deal with in a lot of different ways but um, you know there's there's a it's there's, there's a hard truth to having to look at certain population groups and just saying I don't know how to help you I don't think that I can help you and I don't know anybody that can and and would they even recognize help as that I, I mean even help if you say i'm gonna help you they go oh you think you're better than me they see it as a threat yep exactly. exactly there are groups that oh you have a high iq uh you're a horrible human being oh you you've been to college you're you 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 must uh you know you must be an elitist, whatever elitist swine well, I'm sorry to, and even if you told these people, like, um, you know, IQ takes fucking work, sorry to say, and you are just as capable, unless you have some sort of brain damage, you're just as capable of having IQ as anybody else, but you just don't want to do the fucking work. You just let everybody else do all the, uh, the thinking and deciding and providing for you. And then questioning the people that actually know what the hell they're doing because you can't fathom the fact that people have invested decades of their life into the research. Yeah, all mm. because the the message they're giving doesn't correspond to whatever dear leader, decider, provider they've, they've, they've chosen. See, so here's the thing. I have personally met farmers and business owners i mean like you know owns a grocery store a mom and pop level one or um you know handmade manufactured goods and things like that you know i've met a lot of these down-to-earth people that have college degrees some more than one and they're happy doing what they're doing but they're educated some things we have disagreements on some things we see eye to eye on but they're educated they're not saying things out of ignorance they're saying things out of an educated background there is a difference when you're having a conversation with somebody who has received some level of education versus one who has received none at all well again uh, <clears throat> education is another thing because uh, it's not everything because oh no no it's not our everything pres our present education system is again it's in this uh obey for rewards kind of thing i mean it doesn't at all require critical thought and i mean even iq tests themselves well all iq tests really prove is that you're good at taking tests yeah yeah we're uh we're over time as it is and uh we gotta Already? roll this up yeah uh, it went fast. Yeah, that went fast today. Yeah, it did. Um, I'm not gonna. Yeah, not only I'd have all of us go ahead and, and uh, put whatever cherry on the top of the whole damn thing, but you know what? Truly, at this point, I don't think there's any real need. Thank you all for being with us tonight. We hope that you found something worthwhile in whatever it was that we meandered through, and hope that you got something to think about for the upcoming week ahead of us all so you all take care uh, over in the live chat of course uh guys thank you uh seeker felis um steph 
still there? I don't... Yeah, they are. Way back over there. Guys, please, more importantly than anything else, please be safe this upcoming week. We, we mentioned earlier at the top of the show, you know, the weather this week is going to be pretty freaking brutal for yeah. North America and, you know, Northern Hemisphere in general. Just... Just be careful. Please be safe. Really, you know, really want you to stay safe. So, as always, Joseph, glad you're able to make it. You take care of yourself and uh, have a have a safe week yourself coming up, huh? Yeah, you too, sir. Business as usual. And whatever that qualifies as right now, right? <laughs> yeah, well, another day, another dollar. No, just... And... Uh, yeah. And no worries about being kicked back to Canada. So there you go. That's always a good one. Oh. That's a plus. Yeah. Um, I don't know yet. Well, your citizenship thing is running into problems again? Uh, yeah. Oh. Well, technicalities. Of course. What you, what, well, we could talk about this after the show. I don't think really. Yes, yeah, it's, it's fair enough. We'll, we'll, yeah. we'll take care of that. Uh, tech, thank you. You you stay warm or whatever qualifies over there. I've been referred to as a polar bear. Warm's not a problem for me. See, it's good. They not put... to be confused with the members of the men's bear club. Yeah, I was. Um, yeah, because you're. On I have the right... bear paw tattooed on me. Okay. Yeah, because uh, you're on the you're on the you're on the right coast, not the left coast. It's Totally different meanings. Thank you, man. Ha ha. Joe, you, you know, good luck with everything. Please don't drop any uh, oil pans on your head. If the oil pan is above my head, there's already something wrong with that situation. Exactly my point. Just be cave, stay safe. Just be safe, stay careful. <laughs> wow. That is not the alcohol talking. That's me being tired. But it's good to have you, man. No, what I mean, not what I say. Yeah, let's go with that. Bridget, um, you know what? It went down like cola. So, <laughs> uh, you know, I... Uh, Whatever. Like I said, this is this is the amber. So, you know, not the stuff in the in the green bottles. So, you know, it's okay. It's good. Yeah. So you take care of yourself, stay God, I was about to say, stay indoors. Oh yeah, not like you're gonna have too much of a choice in the matter at this point, right? Yeah, that's true. Do you wanna but... plug anything or anyone? Mm, not not this week. I don't know anybody who's really doing much of anything. <laughs> Doesn't matter. <laughs> eh, fuck Mike Pence, and he's you know from what I hear, he's back at DC and not here anymore. Oh. <laughs> maybe uh, maybe the yeah. mayor's uh, gonna gonna go ahead and uh, make uh, sweeps uh, out there for the uh, uh, the folks that are uh, otherwise you know not gainfully housed and sweep him up somewhere. Uh, I'm I'm sure he'll be able to, you know, come up with some housing up there. It's just, uh, I've got, <laughs> yeah, there's a reason why he jumped on the VP ticket and left Indiana. Yep. So, yeah, he <laughs> nobody can... wants him back here. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. I've I've got a I've got a, one of the epic rap battles of history in in my head right now because I was uh, I was seeing somebody do a reactions to him. Yeah, eat a fat dick. Uh, I don't know why that's coming up in my head right now. There's probably reasons. But yeah. I'll figure it out later. Anyway, you all, as always, please stay safe, stay warm, stay healthy. And we'll be looking forward to seeing you next week. If you'd like to be in contact with us, all of our contact information is over at holycrapthevlogcast.com. If you'd, leave, if you'd like to leave a voicemail message, phone number there is 859-HCTV-554-859-428-554. We will look forward to talking to you guys again next week. Assuming that, you know, there's no nobody 
tempts the great god Murphy again. But please stay safe. There's, uh, there's one last item that I, I, I need to make reference really quickly. We know full well that next week is Valentine's Day. For some of us, it's Jack Benny birthday. With the way that things have been going, we know full well that we can't always be physically connected to each other. We can't be hugging on and, and kissing on and, and doing the dating scene the same way that we had been. If you're feeling a little bit out of it because of all that, we know. We get you. Just know that even if you do feel lonely, please remember... You're not alone. And we will see you again soon. So until the next time we get together, everyone, as always, I wish you the peace I no longer have. I wish you the strength that I've learned. I wish you well. My lady, 15 and a half years on, I am still in love with you. Matane Fujin, I love you. I miss you. Dream of me. Peace and long life. Live long and prosper. And until the next time, good night.